Hi, I'm Althea, and this is Rose Cottage Notions, where we talk about history bounding, historical costuming, courage, and creativity. This summer has been so long and hot that I've been dreaming of that first rainfall and all the sweaters and woolens that I'm going to get to wear soon. But having an ADHD squirrel brain, I need to plan carefully so I don't lose track of time and end up with nothing to show for all my running around, or in this case, sewing about. I hope you will find this video useful, and if you do, please consider sharing with your people who might be interested in this topic. And stick around until the end because I have some exciting news to share with you. Let's start with learning a bit about what capsule wardrobes are. Capsule wardrobes are small curated collections of garments designed to be worn together, which harmonizes in color and line. So basically it's like <laughs> garanimals for adults. Any piece that you pick will go with the other pieces in the collection. They're interchangeable, so you can grab a top and a bottom and know that they will look good together. The term capsule wardrobe was used as early as the 1940s, although it would take a few more decades to become a part of the common parlance. In the 1970s, the term was revived by wardrobe consultant Susie Foe, owner of the West End Boutique Wardrobe. Her focus was on timeless and classic garments that would not go out of style. She said you could update the collection seasonally, but you would not have to buy a lot of additional garments. By putting together a capsule wardrobe, you would buy fewer, higher quality garments and wear them more often. Faux mainly catered to working women. It helped them to gain confidence by dressing well, to find the core capsule wardrobe as a jacket, a skirt, trousers, a blouse, a sweater, tights, shoots, a coat, a dress and a bag and a belt. But she didn't have any hard, fast rules, rather adjusting each wardrobe to the circumstances of the person. In 1985, Donna Karen popularized the term with her inaugural collection, Seven Easy Pieces. This collection has a wrap skirt, pants, short and long skirts, a tailored jacket, sweaters, scarves, and chunky gold jewelry. The models wore black tights and black bodysuits and put pieces of the collection on until they had a full outfit. The current popularity comes partly out of the Marie Kondo and minimalist movements, um, and humans like systems and patterns, so you have probably heard about capsule wardrobes in the context of minimalism. Thinking about capsule wardrobes, it really makes you focus on what your need is, not to continually buy shiny things. Capsule wardrobes are meant to make you think critically about your clothing. We often just grab something out of a drawer or a closet and throw it on without really thinking about, you know, the thing that we're putting on our bodies. Clothing has a past and each piece of clothing has a history. The fibers were grown by a farmer or ranch and a person. The plants were harvested and the animals sheared by a person. The fibers were cleaned and processed into threads and yarns by a person. The yardage was woven by a person. The garment was designed by a person. The piece of clothing was cut and sewn by a person. And then that garment made its way from the manufacturer to your closet and passed through many hands. Many people were involved in the making of the t-shirt or jeans that you wear, but too often some of those people are exploited. It's, it's hard to find truly guilt-free clothing in our unfettered capitalist economies. You know, therefore each garment or fabric purchase needs to be mindfully done to respect the people whose labor you wear. I don't mean to get all preachy and add to our buckets of guilt we always seem to carry, but to bring awareness that clothing is not a throwaway thing. We may no longer grow or spin or weave and sew our own clothing, but somebody does. And they're humans who have their own stories behind every single thing in your closet, and they deserve your compassion and gratitude. For a capsule wardrobe, there's no set number of pieces there or parameters or guidelines. There's no rules other than what works for you. Start by thinking about your goals for the capsule wardrobe. Where do you plan to wear this is going to determine what kind of clothing you need. Um, is it for work? Is it for travel? Um, if it's for work, you need more professional look. And if for travel, you want something that packs and travels well. When you're beginning, start with a co small core number of pieces and build out from there. Start with a color palette or a theme. This makes it easy to stay narrowly focused and to avoid purchases that don't work with the other items in your capsule wardrobe. I've been more mindful of color choices as I've become more intentional with clothing choices. In the past, there's been a lot of black and gray in my closet, which are classic and easy to wear for most skin tones, but those colors really don't speak to me. So in my autumn palette, I'm moving to browns, forest green, and oh my God's orange. I'm so loving all of the yummy burnt oranges that are out there this fall. 
It's why I'm looking to forests for color inspiration. So bring on the hot cocoa because I am so ready for cool rainy weather. Know what works for your body shape. Wear your bliss. If you like it, it works for your body shape because life is too short to wear crappy clothes. If your budget is limited, buy better quality as you can afford it. This isn't a race and it takes time to find or make the right clothes. Over the last couple of decades, I've kind of let myself go stale when it comes to clothes. I struggled with body images. My body changed from the lift 20 something to something closer to Nanny Og, which is what I am today. So it was pretty much jeans and t-shirts that fit rather nonchalantly, if at all. They were too big, too small, too wrong colors. It was just to make myself boring and invisible. But you know, F that. I'm growing out my gray because I'm transforming into the forest roaming, garden gnoming, impish pixie that's my heart. And so that means a new wardrobe, so yay. <laughs> Over the next couple of years, I plan to replace about 90% of my current closet holdings, pare it down to just the most meaningful pieces and well-made pieces. There are some nice pieces that I would like to keep, like my merino wool shirts, my universal standard clothes, and everything I have ever bought from Eshakti. I'm not sponsored by any of these shops, but I just really love their clothing. I put together a Pinterest board to capture some inspiration pieces and called it Forest Wanderer. I don't know why, but I seem to like to name things and have themes, probably because I am the queen of scope creep and doing it this way helps me control my do all the things mentality. <laughs> you will notice that I don't stick to one time period. I'm not doing historically accurate clothesy and time is all wibbly wobbly, timey wimey anyway. So I'm doing a history bound wardrobe that will be appropriate for work and occasional jaunts through haunted forests carrying a basket of fresh baked pastries. So at this stage, I'm just kind of dreamily looking at pretty pictures and pinning with wild abandon with no care or thought for rhyme or reason. The first thing that may pop out to you, dear viewer, is that I seem to have a love of tweed and woolens that flirts with fetish. I must have watched a movie in the past during my impressionable years that equated Harris tweed with style and sophistication, but that old kind of English old money that lives in wellies and lives in a manor house that's been in the family since that nice young William came over from France. In short, Lady Sybil. So we know that plaids and tweeds and woolens are a given. The colors range from mossy forests to cool mount, misty mountains and you can almost smell the damp mornings warmed by a cozy fire with massive hounds at your feet. But I also like the playful and, quirk, and having quirky, unexpected details. So there'll be a lot of couture methods used throughout the collection. I have a couple of vintage sewing books on couture methods that I've been itching to open again. I just love doing these fiddly details and it's been so long since I've made anything remotely as awesome as I want these, this wardrobe to be. And I've done excruciatingly complex clothings for my medieval reenactment for the SCA, but not recently for modern dress. So my next step is to do a ton of rough drawing. So this is just stream of consciousness drawing and banging them out until I have a fair pile. I use a plus size croquis to get an idea of what my imaginings will look like on a body similar to mine. I'll post a link below to go to the Etsy shop where I got it. For my first few pieces, I want to do a vest and a skirt. The look I'm going for is Eva Green cosplaying Claire Frazier, the turn of century Forest Park Manor that is most likely haunted. So simple, right? <laughs> I purchased a flat sketch template from Zoe Hong. Again, not sponsored, but I do like to acknowledge artists and support them. I use this template to draw a more detailed technical rendering to start keying on, in on what I want to design and make. I usually make several versions of whatever it is that I'm aiming for and each one's kind of getting closer to that final eureka moment. And it's t valuable to take the time to think about where seams will go. What kind of details do you want? What kind of structure will the garment have? And with my squirrel brain, I really need this to focus, to understand the garment. And once I arrive at a design I want to wear, then that's when the real work begins. In an upcoming video, I'll share the final designs and start to make the mock-ups. Now about that thing I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This is the part where I tease you about an upcoming thing that I am really excited about. I'm going to be opening a small Etsy shop with history bounding, adjacent t-shirts, leggings, and a few other things I can cook up. So I'll be sharing more in the next few weeks. 
Um, the launch date is September 11th, so mark your calendars and uh, pop over to Etsy. I'll link down below so that you can find my Etsy shop. Until next time, get vaccinated, wash your hands, wear your masks, and socially distance because I want you around <laughs> for a really long time. And so until next time, I bid you joy.